Hi, my name is Ron Lohman. I'm here with my colleague John Swanson. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, primitive math functions related to AI chipset development. So, um, John, what kind of um, trends have you seen in the market with respect to uh, adoption to the primitive math that's required for these neural network chips? We've really seen AI bring out a whole new set of requirements for the floating point and some of the integer math as well. Uh, it kind of began with things like BFLOAT16 and we had to do updates to our IP to support that because it wasn't a standard format. Uh, companies are very secretive about what they're doing, uh, but what we're seeing people do is that you know, they set the value of the components for the significant and the exponents uh, to what they need for their application. And a very simple example of that is you want to recognize color. Okay, I can tell red from blue, but if I want to tell shades of blue, then I need more precision. And more precision, of course, takes more area, which makes the silicon more expensive. You mentioned BFLOAT16, so there's been a lot of discussion of that being, maybe being adopted as a de facto standard. Are you seeing that across the board? Again, people do what they need to do to get the job done, and they really don't care about standards. It's application, you know, processing the sense data, the sound data, whatever kind of data is coming in, and depending on the level of precision you need is how you would tune it. Uh, and, and, you know, and maybe a good example of why we've gone the way we've done is all of these things can be built of low-level components. Right. You know, historically, mathematical components are big fuse things, right? They're incredibly accurate, but somewhat large. If you don't need that accuracy, you had no way to tune it down. And one of the things we've done is we give our customers the ability to control their accuracy and quickly run C simulations to make sure it will meet their requirements. Okay, so one of the uh, math functions that we talk to our embedded vision processor guys about is dot product. Uh, it seems as though that can be a dominant uh, math function within these neural networks. Is that something that from a primitive math function, kind of the most common thing that gets implemented? That is the most common thing. And when you look at the implementation, there's sometimes you know thousands and thousands of these things on the chip. Uh, and so if you can reduce the area a little bit and meet your end design's requirements, you've got something pretty powerful. And you can build it up out of the atomic level components, right? And then control the accuracy as you go through your, your network as needed. Okay, and um, from a synopsis perspective, how are we addressing uh, this uptick in custom uh, primitive math functions okay. that customers are requiring? So we've been in the math business for a long time. Many people forget that the designware library is full of both integer and floating point, you know, mathematical components. But again, with these new standards and these, you know, I'd call them strange configurations for lack of a better term, uh, we needed to come up with a new way to do it. So we actually created a new product called Designware Foundation Cores, uh, which is, includes the source code. When you configure the component, like if you have a you know, adder, you can configure it for whatever, you know, whatever values you want in the significant and the exponent. Uh, and then based on that, we'll generate the RTL and the C code. And that's another key thing okay. here. Uh, historically, there were no C models for these, these components that we did. But with the C models, if you're trying to reduce the accuracy, you're changing the precision of your design, you need to make sure it's you know, going to meet your requirements. And if you need to run you know, traditional HDL simulations, they are little take a little bit more time. So we generate bit accurate C models that let customers quickly run verification. We, we generate the test bunches and all the things they need to use it as part of the product. So one of the things that we may have talked about before is some of the basic math functions that TensorFlow supports. Obviously, TensorFlow is one of the most popular frameworks out there for AI model development. Uh, does our solution support um, those functions? One of the projects that we actually have ongoing right now is going through the list of tensor functions, because it's quite a long list, yeah. uh, and figuring out which ones are actually being used the most, and then which ones should be implemented in hardware. And then the next step is to do a benchmark of building it up from the atomic components, fully accurate. Uh, and then are there other optimizations you can do to kind of maintain that accuracy? Uh, but reduce the area and get it to run faster. It's all about reducing the area, getting things to run faster, and giving customers the uh, flexibility they need to implement their designs. So you've talked about um, sometimes thousands of instantiations for these things. Some of these AI chipsets, specifically in the data center, uh, are highly um, uh, die limited, meaning they're just filled with with processing capabilities. So are you doing optimizations, I assume, for, for the, the area to fit more of that processing on chip? 
Is that, is that kind of the, it, the basically trend? Th that's part of it. And the other big trend we're seeing is the chip to chip or the module to module, die to die kind of linkage, right? Because okay. some of these designs do get very big. And if you're if, if you can make it smaller, you can lower the costs and things like that. So uh, that's another reason why I think you're going to see AI driving some of the the chip to chip, module to module, die to die sort of standards that are coming. Well, I want to thank you for sharing your expertise today. Um, it's been really enlightening learning about the primitive math and, and what's out there from a hardware perspective and how Synopsys addresses it. Uh, if you want to know more, go to synopsys.com.